in this uh, session we'll uh, handle one of the most important uh, aspects as far as uh, the financing for uh, long term infrastructure projects is concerned how do i handle the interest on the loan during the construction period because construction period is that kind of a phase where i don't have any revenues out of my business right no operations have started during that time frame so there are no revenues but interest is a major cost probably if i am talking about a 100 crore loan that has been taken let's say even at 10% every year the interest itself on a very simple terms the interest is coming to 10 crores and if my operations are not uh, there during the first few years where will i get this 10 crores from to pay the interest that is what we are calling as the interest during the construction period and uh, generally the mechanism wise even that would be capitalized means i would be borrowing even to include my loan amount uh, might include even this borrowing amount also even the loan on this even the interest on this borrowing amount would be included as a part of my loan so instead of borrowing 100 crores probably i may borrow 111 crores or something so that whatever is the 10% uh, interest even that would be paid from this 111 which means probably even if i am on an average assuming 11 crores is the interest at the rate of 10% if 11 crores is the interest the remaining 100 crores will be used for typically funding the project so that is the typical mechanism uh, which can handle this interest during the construction period so for our uh, case study also let's try to uh, look at how can i incorporate this interest during the construction period as a part of my mod right so getting back uh, into our uh, spreadsheet we'll try to uh, model this interest during the construction period all right now for this i will create uh, another uh, spreadsheet calling it as the interest and principal this will be the name of my spreadsheet because we will uh, deal with all kinds of interest and principal calculations as a part of this particular sheet all right now what are all the things that are associated with interest and principal let's go down here we are seeing that yes out of the total project this is the debt and the equity portion so i need to first uh, find out what is the total cost of the project so that the 60% of it is drawn down in the form of debt and 40% of it is taken in the form of equity so to address that probably this is the cost of the project before idc then i will also add the interest during the construction period whatever it is this is what i have to get so assuming that these two are the interest during the construction period so all i can say is this is the total project cost a total cost of the project including idc whatever are the numbers that i am going to fill in there right so i'll do a simple summation of these two things right here again the interest during the construction period okay this is the total cost of project including the interest during construction period now all i am uh, doing is the same logic i will apply across so what i will uh, typically uh, put up even here also is if this 
if this is equal to c only then i will do this calculation of summation otherwise i will retain it as a blank just like the way what we were, we were uh, doing earlier so even this part i will drag until this is it all right so these were the typical uh, loan amounts for us during the construction period these are the typical loan amounts for us during the construction period now going back to our uh, scenario of uh, interest and principal uh, here all i can do is i need to know i need to know my total project cost so if i go with this i know this this is the total project cost whatever once i put some number here this is the total project cost 60% of this is in the form of uh, debt and 60% uh, of this is in the form of debt so probably once i know the total uh, project cost i can put the compositions of debt and equity here right so i'll uh, write it as debt and equity composition so the debt out of this number it is 60% right out of this number i will take debt as 60% and similarly the same logic i can uh, extend across right the same again if if we are talking of this as the construction period whatever it is r uh, r simply uh, we can put i don't need to bother about uh, the construction period or anything wherever the total cost is wherever the total cost is blank i'll ask it to retain it as blank if this is equal to blank retain it as blank otherwise do this calculation so what happens this is the value of debt for each of the years right probably i can extend it so these are my debt values and similarly the equity also which is nothing but the total cost of the project multiplied by the equity percentage so this comes out as the equity the same logic uh, can be put if the total cost of the project is blank retain it as blank otherwise compute the portion of equity so for each of the years we have computed what is the composition of debt and equity now once i have done this portion the interest part i mean how much loan i have to take in each of the years is typically known right so what i can do is i will construct a interest and principal kind of a sheet wherein a few more things that are associated okay i have to do the drawdown within 2 years so the entire loan is borrowed within 2 years then we are talking about uh, a post drawdown moratorium period of 1 year what is this uh, post drawdown period moratorium period see uh, after uh, the entire loan is uh, drawn down generally the drawdown period may be equal to your uh, uh construction uh, period in large number of cases but it may not be the case in some time probably you can uh, draw down and everything in one single go whatever it is so we are talking about a two year draw down period one year post draw down moratorium means once the draw down is over the bank is giving me a one year period during which the principal repayment need not happen during which the principal repayment need not uh, happen and after that within 12 years the entire 
loan repayment has to happen so which means overall it's a 15 year period 2 years per drawing right 2 years per drawing down 1 year for post drawdown moratorium which in during which only the interest payment needs to be done the principal repayment is not required and finally uh, the repayment uh, period is 12 years after the moratorium period so overall we are uh, trying to look at the principal and the interest for a period of 12 years uh, 12 plus 1 plus 2 15 years and uh, the drawdowns are four probably it may so happen that the interest payments also interest and the principal repayments also we may have to do on a quarterly basis itself because we are drawing the loan on a quarterly basis it may so happen that the interest and the principal repayments also we may have to do on a quarterly basis we'll make that kind of an uh, assumption so now that there are four drawdowns so all i can uh, put up is all i can uh, put up is one the year numbers as well as the period numbers so what i can uh, very well do here is i'll i'll, I'll uh, start up with a period number then year year number so what i'll do here is because it's a a, a quarterly uh, drawdown or a quarterly uh, repayment kind of a period initially i may start with one and now what i will do is i'll put a simple check mark saying if this number if this number is less than the drawdowns per year so if that number is less than the drawdowns per year i will increment this number by 1 otherwise i will make it 1 what does uh, happen uh, what happens during that scenario if we look at uh, this this becomes a 2 this becomes a 3 then becomes a 4 then again it becomes a one we are generating such a kind of scenario and i need uh, this once i need this particular uh, number i need this particular uh, number for a period of uh, 15 years right 2 years for the drawdown period 1 year for a post drawdown uh, moratorium period and 12 years for the payment of the loan right so even there are two three ways i can handle this uh, without making the formula so complex this i can drag it for a sizable number of uh, periods right uh, we can uh, drag it uh, for let's say 30 years or 40 years kind of period probably we can uh, keep uh, n number of periods it doesn't uh, matter because we'll handle everything else at our that are other layer so these are the periods as a part of our uh, loan and the year number what i can uh, very well do is i will increment the year numbers so year number all i am uh, saying is initially again i will start up with a one and what i can do is if this particular period is equal to one means it's a it's a start of the new year if that is equal to one i will increment this by one means we are going into the new year otherwise i will take it as it is means we are continuing in the existing year itself 
So the same logic probably I can uh, continue across. So I will get this is the year 5, year 10, year 19, year 25, year 38. We have done it up to a year 38. So we can retain it to that extent itself. So this is the period number and this is the year number. Even if the frequency changes there, instead of uh, quarterly that becomes semi-annual or something like that or three times in a year, whatever it is, all these things can very well be dynamically updated in this particular sheet. So we have a period number, we have a year number. Now all that is required here for me is based on the construction period, right? I need to find out what is the principle that I am drawing down. Okay, principle drawdown or probably I will call it as only drawdown which means uh, how much I am drawing in each of the periods. Right, how much I am drawing in each of the periods. All I can uh, take is here we have a two year construction period. So in the first year this should be the drawdown, in the second year this should be the drawdown and because it is a quarterly, every quarter I will draw one fourth of that. So how do I reflect that scenario? For this I will make use of a formula called index. What does this index formula do in a particular uh, array? Right in a particular uh, row or a column or a, uh, a in a particular uh, rectangular location, based on the row and the column intersection, it will extract the value of that cell for me. Probably in this array, if I say first row, second column, then it will pull out this value because in this particular uh, array. The first row and the second column is 32.91. So, by making uh, that row number and column number dynamic, I can extract whatever the value I can typically uh, I am looking at. right? So, from that standpoint, uh, I can use this index formula here to bring out what is the value that is corresponding to each of the years. Okay, from a drawdown standpoint, I am typically uh, looking at index of this particular array, the debt array, index of this particular uh, debt array, let me uh, freeze this uh, array, within that array, pull out the first row because anyhow we have only one row in it, but the column number that I have to pull out is whatever is the year number that is existing, whatever is the year number that is existing plus 1. Means if the year number is 1, pull out the second column. If the year number is 2, pull out the third column and so on. So what comes out? This is the drawdown amount. But of course, this number has to be divided by the drawdown frequency because this has to be drawn down in four equal installments. So the first period drawdown is something like this and when I go down, yeah, the first periods, these are the numbers, the second period, these are the numbers but after that it is giving me a hash value error. Why is it giving me a hash value error? Because we don't have any values in the construction period after this. So there are two ways to handle this. If that is coming out as an error, leave it as a blank or probably you can write the appropriate uh, validation logic straight forward. What is that validation logic? Probably you compare if, uh, uh, if uh, the drawdown period See, only during uh, the drawdown years you will be uh, doing this exercise. 
so because the drawdown period is two years all i can put a rule here is if the year number is less than or equal to the drawdown period here if the year number is less than or equal to the drawdown period do all this otherwise replace it with a blank straightforward mechanism to handle instead of uh, saying if the value comes out as error leave it as blank or something if i handle it this way no issues because uh, th uh, this is the only drawdown period so for the first two years the drawdown amounts are something like this every quarter this is the kind of drawdowns that i am doing right so this is the drawdown that i am doing uh, at the end of uh, each of the periods so this is where now we work out with the interest part right interest also will focus only during the construction period to start with right and after that we will uh, we will uh, go with uh, the operations period interest so that's where i'll put up uh, the column only for the interest during the construction period so how do i uh, handle the interest during the construction period these are the principal amounts i am pulling out each of the periods which means the interest actually is applicable on the total drawdown amount for each of the periods so all i will be handling is whatever is the principal amount that i am drawing down right or probably i'll uh, put up a summation of this to this for next period this 3 is something i'll fix so it becomes d3 to d4 d3 to d5 so that is the outstanding principal amount across each of the periods i am multiplying that by the periodic interest rate what is the periodic interest rate here the rate of interest is 12% but that is per year so we are talking about quarters here so i am dividing that by quarter saying that my interest during this period is going to be something like this and at the same time okay so let me let me just uh, do this and uh, based on this we'll handle the next scenario so these are the principles and these are the interest during the construction period but yes these are not the construction period scenarios only up to here it is the construction period okay so let me do a small adjustment here if the year number is less than or equal to the construction period only what is the construction period here 2 years if that is less than or equal to the construction period only retain retain this calculation otherwise keep it as blank we'll handle the other part of the interest slightly later so what is coming out here you are getting the interest during the construction period only up to this but the serious part is the interest is levied on the interest also See, we are uh, levying an interest on this is the outstanding principal, but the interest is levied even on the interest also. So what I will do is a small modification here. Not only the principal into this, I'll do In, along with uh, the summation of uh, d3 to d3 i would also put the summation of or probably i'll also put the previous period outstanding interest the previous periods outstanding uh, interest as a part of the final interest calculation so what happens here when i drag it across 
slightly higher values are also getting applied because it even includes the interest on interest. So, because of this, right now, I know that these are my drawdowns, these are my interest during the construction periods. Now, with this uh, information, right, if I go back with that particular uh, information, if I go back here saying this is the interest during the construction periods, all I can go ahead with is here I can fill out the interest during the construction period. How do I uh, fill that? So, from here, I will add up all those interests which are corresponding to year number 1. So, I will use the formula called sum ifs. So, I will say sum if or sum if within this particular range, you do the summation, uh, sorry, within this particular range, wherever the criteria is equal to the year number here wherever the criteria is equal to the year number there you add up the entire interest portion you add up the entire interest portion so this is one scenario that gets created called as a circular reference because what is this circular reference? We are talking about, if we see here the interest and this interest is uh, getting uh, into, the into the computation of the total cost. From the total cost, we are computing the debt and from the debt only, we are computing the interest. So, the output is going as the input again. So, it is, this is what we typically call as the iteration loop. The interest that is getting uh, determined from the debt is again uh, uh, going as an input into the computation of the debt. This is typically called as a recursive kind of a formula, right? So, whenever we talk about uh, the recursive formulas, we will uh, come across the circular reference kind of a problem in the Excel sheet. So, in order to handle this problem of circular reference straightforward, whenever we are uh, getting into such kind of scenario, getting get into this options, under this formulas uh, tab of uh, the option, we will see that by default, this element will be disabled. Only when you do not check enable iterative calculation, then only you will get into this uh, case of circular reference uh, error. So, to avoid that circular reference error, it is better that you check the enable iterative calculation scenario and you will not have your circular reference and as well as uh, even the interest during the construction period is very well updated. And what we also can put is this will be applicable only if this is C. So, we have to be very comfortable in terms of writing the Excel formulas only. The more and more comfortably we are able to write the Excel formulas, we can create as much of dynamic models as possible. So, we have to be very comfortable handling all these uh, scenarios. Alright, so we have got the interest during the construction period, the interest, okay, here small problem with the formula interest and principal, the C column, yeah, when I am dragging it, it is actually becoming uh, the D column, so it is better that I freeze the C column before I drag it. Construction B1 is still fine and interest and principal E column also need to be frozen. Now I will drag it. Right. Now when I am dragging it. Yeah. Now let us see. Yes. These are the interests. And so I will remove this uh, formatting now. Right. So no filling. So, the interest during the construction period for year 1 is something like this, for year 2 it is something like this. 
these are the total interests that are incurred during the construction. Now, if we see here, the, to the project costs got updated, this and this. And also, if we see the debt also got updated in 60-40, debt and equity got updated in the 60-40. And probably here, again, the interest and the principles, earlier both of them were in the period uh, somewhere in the range of 8 but now this has uh, this has moved to 8.6 and this has moved to 9.4 all these things will be auto updated when we are uh, handling that case of circular reference error in the spreadsheet so these are my interests during the construction period and probably if at all i have to talk about uh, the total project cost Right now we are trying to put up total project cost. How much is it? I can equate this, these things. I can simply take the summation of this and say that that is equal to the total cost of the project. Around 120.77 crores will become the total cost of the project. And to make things uh, more and more uh, uh, good enough from a presentation standpoint probably it's better that I handle all these things in the form of numbers probably with two decimals or something like this so this is how I can get uh, a better representation of each of these things so if I want it in terms of I'm not uh, rounding them off for the simple reason probably if someone wants to express them not in terms of uh, crores but want to do it in lakhs or probably want to do it in thousands then probably we need to have the numbers in the original form so that's the reason i am not uh, rounding it at the formula level but i am handling the rounding at the presentation level that's what uh, we have done by saying i'll take all this and uh, make it as a number with two decimals uh, as a decimal same logic probably we can put for these things also because uh, look wise it creates a kind of a difference so we'll take it as a number probably with a two digit uh, decimals so that uh, even the re representation or the presentation looks much more better wherever we are doing it's better that we uh, handle that kind of uh, formatting uh, things so that things are much more better right so this is how we are handling the interest during the construction period and finally arriving at saying this is the total cost of the project and uh, so from a loan standpoint we are borrowing okay so here we can uh, just summarize the thing saying total debt is the summation of the debt column all right so 72 out of the 120 crores or 121 crores of project worth around 72.4 crores is taken in the form of debt and probably when I am looking at uh, equity around uh, 48 crores is in the form of equity. So this is the typical uh, breakup. And now, so now we know that this is the cost that we are incurring on the project. The next phase, once the construction phase is over, I am moving on uh, to the operations phase, wherein I may have to look at, okay, if this is what I am spending from various uh, sources, either from my own pocket around 48 crores or from, uh, uh, in, uh, or from an external debt, for 72, 72 and a half crores, whatever is uh, the amounts I am taking and uh, from the operation space I am expecting these to be my profits. What would be the overall return for this entire 33 year scenario? That is what is my end objective as a part of this uh, exercise. So, so we will start uh, modeling the operation space. Now that we are done with the construction part, we will start modeling the operations uh, phase of the project and finally uh, take it towards the building of the financial statements for all this 33 year period. Right? 
I hope you are uh, comfortable on uh, how we handle this interest, especially during the construction period, because we have to look at the interest during the other periods. But interest during the construction period, how it is uh, taken into the total cost of the project, which again uh, after including this interest during construction also the the, uh, the bifurcation should be in the ratio of 60 40 so this is how uh, we break down that entire thing and finally uh, ending up uh, with the total cost of the project in case you have any uh, further queries regarding uh, the same i suggest that you can very well get back uh, to me by giving me a call at this uh, particular uh, number or you can even send in an email at pomsidhar at pacegurus.com Thanks a lot uh, for listening uh, to this uh, session. Thank you very much.